Hello students, welcome to class 9 computer applications. So the chapter that I am going to discuss with you today is cyber safety. I will be discussing this chapter in parts. So this is the part 1 of this particular chapter. So let's try to understand what cyber safety is. So nowadays the uses of internet has been increasing tremendously. You use internet for searching various information, seeing videos, playing various online games, for online shopping and various other uses. So with the wide uses of internet, there has been various threats which are associated with internet. In this chapter, we are going to learn about some of these threats and how to protect ourselves from these threats and how to not pose us as a threat to someone else. So which brings us to the definition of cyber safety, which is cyber safety refers to the safe and responsible use of internet so as to ensure safety and security of personal information and not posing threat to anyone else information. So what it says, it says that how to use the internet safely and responsibly so that we are protected from the threats and so that we do not possess as a threat to others okay so it involves gaining knowledge about possible threats to personal safety and information about measures to prevent them and counter them so what we'll be learning in this particular chapter we will learn we will gain various knowledge about the possible threats which are happening in the cyber uh, cyber world and how to prevent them and if threat occurs to us how to counter them means how to manage the threats if it somehow occurs okay so the main kind of threat or the first kind of threat that i am going to discuss is identity fraud so let's try to understand what identity fraud is so let's say this is you and let's say your name is <coughs> raj okay and let's say today you were absent in the school but in the school attendance is taken daily let's say there is a friend of yours whose name is let's say abhijit now let's say abhijit give, gives attendance in your name that means abhijit is posing as raj that means he is stealing your identity as abhijit is stealing raj identity this will be a case of identity fraud let's try to understand it properly okay so what is identity fraud so when personal details that have been accessed or stolen are used to commit fraudulent acts such as posing as someone else with stolen identity it is known as identity fraud now what will be identity fraud in case of cyber world let's say we have two persons let's say that this person's name is raj and he has a credit card which you can see here let's say we have another person called Samir now what Samir does Samir somehow steals Raj personal information of his credit card so what Samir does Samir has stolen the information of Raj now what can Samir do now after getting his per personal information Samir will pose as Raj and he can do fraudulent activities online so what Samir has done he has stolen the identity of Raj so this is known as identity fraud so when personal uh, details of one individual has been stolen by a different individual then and that is used to commit some cyber crime it is known as identity fraud now when you visit a particular website there are various ways in which websites can track us let's try to see what are the ways in which websites can track us so the different ways are first is ip address second is cookies third is http referrals fourth is super cookies and fifth is user agent so these are the various ways in which websites can track us let's see them one after another so we'll be beginning with ip address so what is ip address so let's say uh, you have a set of connected computers let's say this is one computer this is the second computer and this is the third computer let's say all these three computers 
are connected to each other that means they form a part of a network then let's say this is pc number one pc two and pc three so it will have an ip address it will have an ip address it will have an ip address so what is an ip address it is a numerical level what is it it is a numerical level associated with every device connected on the network so all the devices that are connected in the internet has an ip address so when your device is connected to the internet it will have an ip address why an ip address is required so that you can be identified on the network easily okay for example all of you have a home address okay and your home address is unique from your friend's home address similarly ip address is also unique so what is the definition of ip address so ip address it is, is a numerical level attached to every device connected to a network okay it is numeric so from the ip address a website can determine your rough geographical location so when you visit a particular website from your ip address that website can estimate your rough geographical location like you are uh, uh, using the website from let's say kolkata then from your ip address only your location can be traced okay there are various forms or various types of ip address which i shall not go into details at this point you will get all this in class 12 okay so the next way in which websites track us is the cookies so let's try to understand what cookies are so cookies are small pieces of information that websites store in your web browser so when you visit a particular website some additional small pieces of information comes along with that website which are used to track your online activity over that particular website so what are these these are text files which store information related to an user's online habit like browsing activities so there are two types of cookies so let's try to understand it with the help of a diagram let's say you visited a website called flipkart dot com okay so let's say you want to buy a mobile so then uh, you have clicked on electronics after clicking on electronics you went to the mobile section and then let's say you saw certain mobiles of let's say mi let's say samsung and let's say nokia okay so what cookies will do whenever you visited flipkart.com the cookies has also come to your browser so the you have went to electronics then to the section mobile then you have used uh, you have browsed some mobiles of samsung nokia and uh, mi so all these activities can be tracked with the help of cookies now why are cookies used now after seeing this let's say you have to take the permission of your father as to which mobile you are going to buy so that day you did not buy the mobile you just browse through that, that particular website and you have closed it now after a few days let's say you visit the website flipkart.com again so you will see that you will find recommendations based on your previous search like you will get recommendations based on the mobiles nokia mi and various other similar mobiles let's say you have done some um, browsing related to some clothes the next time you visit flipkart.com that time you will get recommendations or various ads related to clothes now how this is possible this is possible because while you were browsing the internet or while you were browsing the website flipkart.com the cookies came along with that and those cookies were used to uh, track your online activities okay so these are small pieces of information and they are generally stored as text files so there are two types of cookies first is your first party cookies so what is the use of first party cookies so first party cookies stores information like user ids passwords etc okay so they are basically used to store information like user ids password etc for example when you visit let's say gmail.com now whenever you enter your user id and password for the first time if you are browsing through google chrome it will ask you whether you want to save it or not 
so if you click on save then the next time whenever you will visit gmail.com you need not enter your user id and password again and this is done with the help of the first type of cookies which is first party cookies what is the next type of cookies it is the third party cookies what does the third party cookies do so it stores user search history browsing history so as to place appropriate advertisements so the example which i have discussed a few minutes back about flipkart.com so that thing will be done by third party cookies it will see it will track you online and it will see your search history and browsing history so that appropriate advertisements can be given to you okay next is http referrer so what is http referrer so is let's say you visit a particular website in that website you are getting an ad of a different website so when you visit a particular website that website will get certain information about you about you like your operating system your browser your rough geographical location but in that website if there is an advertisement of a different website and you click on that particular advertisement then the third party website or the advertisement website will also get your information this phenomenon is known as http referrer i'll explain you with the help of an example so let's see the definition if an user visits a third party website from a different website then the third party website will also get the user information like ip address geographical location operating system etc this is known as http referrer let's try to understand it properly so let's say this is a particular website this is the website of moneycontrol.com so if you give www.moneycontrol.com you will get this particular website so the thing with this website is that it contains various ads so as you can see there is one box which is highlighted in red this is an ad of an insurance of icici bank so icici bank it is not related to moneycontrol.com website but if you want to take an insurance and you click on this particular uh, link then you will go to a different website see till now who has your information moneycontrol.com has your information why because you have visited that particular website now from that website if you click on a different advertisement then that website also this is the website that means this website will also be able to get your information that means you are visiting where one website but from that you went to a different website so that website will also get your information and this particular phenomenon is known as http referrer so the advertisement website is known as the third party website why it is known as a third party website because you did not go to this website directly you went it from a different website next is your super cookies so what are super cookies a super cookie is a type of browser cookie that is designed to be permanently stored on a user's computer so the thing with cookies is that if you want you can choose to delete the cookies so that the websites cannot track it, track you but if super cookies is being installed to your browser they cannot be de deleted or disabled easily okay but the work is almost same these are difficult for the users to remove since they cannot be deleted in the same fashion as regular cookies so you cannot delete it in the same fashion as regular cookies so you can say that super cookies are a little bit stronger as compared to your regular cookies so they serve the same fashion as regular cookies that means their work is same as regular cookies by storing the browser history tracking online habits and sending targeted ads based on users activities okay their work is same that means they will track your browsing activities they will put certain ads based on your search history but they are difficult to delete next is a user agent so what is an user agent when you visit a particular website someone sends certain so there is an agent in your browser a virtual agent which sends information related to your browser that agent is known as the user agent so what is an user agent so user agent it tells the website about an user's browser 
operating system thereby providing another piece of data that can be stored and used to target ads okay so whenever you visit a particular website certain information goes automatically from your browser you do not send those information so that is done with the help of an agent virtual agent known as the user agent okay so these are the various ways so what is it it is a software that is acting on behalf of the user so you are not sending the information it is, so it is going automatically someone is acting on behalf of you to send it send your information okay so these are the various ways in which websites can track us so as you can see whenever you visit on websites then various information goes into that particular website okay so in the next session we'll be learning how to protect ourselves so that the websites do not get our information completely okay so based on today's session i'm giving some questions you will try to attempt these questions so what are the questions first is what is cyber safety what is identity fraud mention the ways in which websites can track you you just have to mention the ways you need not write the details next what is ip address what do you mean by cookies what is the difference between cookies and super cookies so you will try to solve these with these six questions thank you very much i'll see you in the next session